Well, welcome back to the Long Crime Network. I'm Linda Kenny Bodden, and I am joined today by my very special guest. He's also a Fox News contributor, my husband, Dr. Michael Bodden. Hi, honey. Hello. I've leaned over to you. kiss you, but I think I may violate some <laughs> kind of sexual harassment rules or something. And of course, the major investigative reporter for this network, chief investigative reporter. He's also chief legal. He's everything you can imagine, uh, and, and and also a wonderful person to learn from, Brian Ross. Hi, Brian. How are you? Thank hey, you for joining good to be us here. today. Yes, thanks for asking me. Thank you. So, Michael, you had an explosive interview this morning on Fox and Friends where you revealed what your findings were about Jeffrey Epstein, whether it was a homicide or a suicide or whether it was consistent with a homicide or consistent with a suicide. I just want to tell you, without you explaining, it was a more consistent with a homicide, Jeffrey Epstein's death. More consistent as from the information we now have uh, as a homicide. And indeed, one of the things you're showing us and has never been seen before is a diagram and a, a picture from the autopsy report, which we have actually here on the screen. The red arrows were added by me, by the way. Now, that was not the original. But it shows the fractures, the three fractures you discussed, one in the hyoid bone and uh, two in the thyroid cartilage, if I get that right. right. Uh, and there you can see them. Look at them on the, and that's actually uh, Jeffrey Epstein's hyoid bone on the uh, right side of your screen and the diagram of where the three fractures were on the left side of your screen. Uh, right. Could you show on Brian exactly where those are? Yeah, w the uh, hyoid, the Adam's, the thyroid cartilage is the Adam's apple, and it sticks out in, uh, more prominently in men. My finger's on uh, Brian's uh, Adam's apple. On either side of that are the two uh, horns of the thyroid cartilage that were fractured, and above it, which you can't see or feel usually, is the uh, horseshoe-shaped uh, hyoid bone. Uh, there was a fracture of the left side of the hyoid bone, and the left uh, horn of the thyroid cartilage and also the right horn of the thyroid cartilage. This usually does not happen in uh, suicidal hangings because the ligature goes upwards underneath the mandible, the, the jawbone, which is the, a very tough bone, the jawbone, and doesn't fracture. And the ligature is often above the um, the uh, hyoid bone and the thyroid cartilage. In manual strangulation or ligature strangulation, when the rope is in the area of the thyroid uh, Adam's apple, uh, fractures can occur. Okay, Michael, let me just stop you for a second because I know that's a lot for us to take in. And I know Brian has a number of questions. Brian. Well, tell me this. The, he died August 10th, found in his cell. The yes. autopsy was done the very next day. Yes. And you were there. Yes. And was there anything else unusual you saw about it? Were there marks on the throat that would suggest a rope of some sort? Y yes. There was a ra round, circular furrow, dried furrow, which indicated a lot of pressure with the ligature uh, and also that it had been there for a while because but when they took the ligature off, it, everything was dried up underneath. So immediately we could tell that he had been dead for many hours. So is that and, consistent, and though, with a suicide? That, that is unlikely in a suicide. In a suicide, the ligature is usually higher. But, uh, and, and, and it's not consistent with manual strangulation, but it is consistent with a ligature being tied around. And one of the things uh, we have to investigate from time to time uh, especially in prisons, is whether somebody was strangled manually and then hung up to make it uh, look like a suicide. And you, you're in charge now of any prison death in New York State. You investigate. You know what to look for when there is a suicide as opposed yes, to a homicide. Yes, there's a law that all, the, all deaths in prison must come to the medical uh, review board that was set up by Governor Rockefeller. Uh, because of the riot, the Attica riot. So let me ask you this. So in, so in Epstein, just so I'm, there's a break here, here, and here? Is that yes. right? So yeah, what would the theory be? Who, how would he be strangled? Out of the, show me how that would have worked if somebody strangled him. Like that. Would be, is that the ligature, which is a kind of thick ligature, would be between the two, and because the horn of the thyroid cartilage comes up ne right next to the um, uh, hyoid uh, bone. The thyroid cartilage... Uh, as you can see in this diagram uh, that was on the board, is, right. we put the sits, diagram back up. For sits a on sits on top of the, uh, on the left there, right? Uh, yeah. the, the high bone, which is on your right, right. Uh -huh. uh, sits on top of the thyroid cartilages, which is on the left diagram, 
and the left horn of the um, uh, the left horn of the uh, hyoid bone is right next to the left horn of the thyroid cartilage, and a ligature right across that would would capture all three. But does that make it impossible that it was a suicide? Not impossible, because although we've never seen, I've never seen in 50 years, and working on lots of uh, suicidal hangings, so that's the most common way people commit suicide in prison. They don't have other means to do it. Is that to have uh, one fracture is unusual. To have two is rare, and we've never seen three fractures in a suicide. Brian, can I just ask hanging. one question? In 50, in 50 years. years, you've never seen three fractures in a, a suicide. It's, it would indicate that it's a homicide, then. Well, that would, but we don't have all the information. For example, uh, is the FBI looking into the corrupted video that wasn't working allegedly when this when Epstein died? And maybe they found things. If they found something that shows Epstein uh, hanging himself up, that would be pow more powerful evidence. But if there was some, he was found with something around his neck. He, according to the guard or the person who found him, he says, but then refused to talk to give statements to the police, that um, uh, he found him w with his head leaning, uh, kneeling on the floor with his head in a noose that he had made from torn strips of orange sheath, and that he had cut the ligature down, he had uh, cut it open and moved the body without anybody, this dead body, obviously dead body, three hours dead, uh, was then moved away to a hospital without any photographs taken, without any kind of uh, uh, getting whatever forensic evidence there is on the body. It's a terrible protocol in terms of a crime scene. That, that the body should never have been moved, photographs should have been taken with the body in place, but there was, uh, if a person kneels into a uh, loop, it's possible to cause death because the loop can c obstruct the carotid arteries, but then there'd be no fractures. There's not much uh, So uh, let me ask force. you this, though. So the official finding that it was a suicide came from your old office, the New York City Medical Examiner. Yes. You're up against them now. Well, I have a difference of opinion. It looks like. Now, we don't have all the information. The problem is once a, a, a death is classified as a suicide, that's the end of the investigation. And the person who did the classification was the person who conducted the autopsy? No. The, the person who did the, the, the person who conducted the autopsy in my presence f uh, did not think there was enough information at that time to call it a suicide. Because did not. This is, uh, did not. So she put down pending further study, meaning pending further investigations. All those investigations, uh, getting information from uh, the wardens, from the inmates, uh, getting DNA from the ligature uh, as to who was handling the ligature, uh, uh, stop, stops as f if it turns out to be a suicide. And one of the things that Jeffrey, uh, that Mark, Jeffrey's brother, was trying to get is why did the uh, medical examiner's office change from pending investigation to homicide. They must have received some kind of additional information not present at the autopsy. And who made that determination? The, ch the chief medical examiner. So not the person who did the, actually conducted the autopsy. That's correct. He kicked it upstairs. Well, the chief medical examiner can make the decision and... Uh, but it wasn't present from what you saw in the autopsy. That, that's correct. It, it required a lot more investigation before one can call it a suicide. And there has to be additional information like a video of him uh, uh, um, hanging himself, but we don't know what the FBI did. And of course, uh, whose DNA is on the ligature? The, the medical examiner was very good and before starting the autopsy in my presence, swabbed the clothing that was on him uh, so they could look for uh, various uh, DNA and, and things. Uh, but we don't know what happened to the critical ligature that was left at the scene when it was cut off the uh, the body, and uh, the, I gather that the guards not only fell asleep, uh, allegedly, but they uh, also were uncooperative with make, giving statements as to what happened. Well, let me ask you this, uh, Michael. Um, has Mark Epstein been told what the results of any DNA examination, if there was any done? Yeah, he can't even find out if any DNA was done, whether or not the FBI, see, the, the difficulty is that that's a federal facility so that 
uh, the FBI takes over the uh, 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 looking for uh, forensic evidence, not the New York City Police Department that's right there. Has anyone come to him and said, but from the FBI, from the Justice Department, here's what we have, here's the results we have, and this is why we agree that maybe it's a, a suicide, or maybe maybe they are still investigating. Or, or if they were investigating, they well, at least one thing they'd come to me is uh, having the other forensic pathologist present at the uh, autopsy. No, nobody is uh, attempted to get any information from me. And the, the point about it is that, Mark, the reason I was willing to speak this morning uh, to, to the media was that uh, Mark, the brother, asked me to because he was so frustrated that there didn't seem to be any active investigation into the cause of death. There's an active in, in investigation into the security, which is deserved. But, uh, and he's concerned that, if it's a homicide, there may be other persons at risk uh, if he was uh, uh, silenced because uh, he had information that somebody didn't like, for example. Wow. Wow. Just uh, uh, quite amazing. Now, he had been on Suicide Watch earlier. They put him on Suicide, suicide Watch. Attempted suicide? Yeah. He, had, uh, the, he was beaten. Uh, this is beaten tricky. Or? He says he was uh, beaten up and uh, laid on the floor and had marks on his neck. He said, the other guy in the, the cellmate uh, tried to strangle him. The, the uh, prison people apparently took it more as an attempt at suicide, so put him on suicide watch. Now, okay, suicide watch means somebody has to watch you and uh, uh, for, for a long period of time. It's not just for a week. It's a, for the whole time you're in, in prison because you might commit suicide. And uh, not only did they take him off suicide watch, but they also they had put him in another in another cell with another uh, inmate who was less dangerous, and they took that guy out the, the, a day or two before he died. Uh, the cameras suddenly didn't work that day. The two guards I've never heard I've heard in investigations in prisons that one guard can fall asleep, but uh, never two guards at the same time, and uh, he was left exposed to 800. Uh, uh, prisoners who may not have liked him, and uh, to guards who may uh, to guards without any security at all. So, with Michael, let me ask you the last final question. In all your years of experience, being on the Correction Review Board, seeing people that have committed suicide in jail, seeing people that have been killed in jails or prison, have you ever had a case where somebody has had three bones up in their neck area fractured, two guards falling asleep, two cameras not working, uh, a, a roommate or cellmate removed from them, and at the same time was a high-profile defendant, defendant who would be a target. Have you ever seen anyone like that no. commit suicide? No. With no. All those he factors. was not, he was afraid of being, his brother thinks he was afraid of being killed after that incident uh, 18 days before he died, uh, and that he was not uh, ever been, he had never been suicidal. Oh. And he was perfectly healthy, he had normal bones, and uh, the only time I've seen three fractures is in a, a homicidal strangulation with hands or with a ligature. Thank you, Michael. Thank you for coming on thank the long you. crime. Oh, my God. Brian, thank you very right. much for helping Absolutely. me. Absolutely. I really appreciate Fascinating it. Fascinating couple here. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Now you have it. Consistent. Jeffrey Epstein's death consistent with the homicide, not consistent with the suicide. Stay tuned. I'm Linda Kenny Bodden. We'll be right back.